Welcome to another WMUG virtual event. I'm Robert Marshall, MVP in System Center 2012 Configuration Manager and Community Leader at the Windows Management User Group. In this session, Justin Chelfant from Patch My PC gives us an overview of the Patch My PC software updates catalog and then dives into a demo on how to implement it in the environment. Thanks for your time, Justin. Over to you. Thanks, Rob. My name is Justin, and in today's demo, I will be talking about the Patch My PC SCUP catalog. I will show you how to install a System Center Update Publisher, import our catalog, distribute the required certificates for clients, and publish and deploy updates using SCUP. Our website is patchmypc.net forward slash SCUP for our SCUP catalog. We currently offer around 45 different third-party products. We're open to uh, adding different products that you use if you purchase our catalog and it supports a silent installation. The catalog costs $1 per managed SCCM client annually. So if you had a thousand clients you wanted to use uh, the third, our SCUP catalog for, it would cost $1,000 a year. So I'll go ahead and get started by installing SCUP. I've done a few things already. So I have a Configuration Manager 2012 Service Pack 1 Lab. I've already installed the software update point. I haven't configured any settings within that. It's all vanilla. I installed the the required hotfix for WSUS 3.0 if you're using System Center uh, Configuration Manager 2012 Service Pack 1 and that's KB2734608. I would also recommend you installing this if you're using Configuration Manager 2007 or 2012 RTM and you haven't applied it yet and that's because it will uh, it, it installs a hotfix for WSUS that will change the required length for signing certificates and if you install this after you start publishing updates using SCUP it could mess up the updates that you've already published and you have to republish those again. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is install another hotfix for uh, WSUS 3.0 Service Pack 2. If you're running WSUS on Server 2012 you won't have to apply these hotfixes in order to run SCUP. And this hotfix is KB2530678. So launch a, you want to run this from an elevated command prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this update. It should go pretty quick. that updates completed. Uh, before I get started with the System Center Update Publisher console install, uh, there's a few requirements. So you need to be running Windows Vista Service Pack 2 or above. It's not supported on Windows XP. And you also need to have .NET Framework 4.0 installed. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this hotfix. And then I'm going to launch the System Center Update Publisher .msi that you can download. And I'm going to also launch this from a elevated command prompt window. The wizard is is pretty quick. It's next. Uh, this is the hot fix that's telling you you need to make sure you install, and that's this KB that we just installed. Just accept the license agreement. I'm going to choose the default location, and that's it. It's all done. So we should have it here in our start menu. Uh, one thing I like to do is go into our compatibility and always run this as administrator. If you have user account control enabled, you definitely want to do this or you may have some issues when you're trying to publish updates. So when it first launches, it's going to make a local database. So if you go to your app data, then if we go back a folder to the local, then if we go to uh, Microsoft, System Center Update Publisher 2011 will be created, and then the version number, and then you'll see this uh, database file. So this is going to be where the SCUP console, console stores all the information that you you do within the console, like importing catalogs, 
uh, publishing updates, it's all saved in this file. Uh, there is a way you can save this to the network and have all the users point to this file so they could all get the same view. It's not supported by Microsoft, but it could be a workaround if you do have multiple administrators working within the same console and you want them to all, all have the same uh, look and feel when they're publishing updates. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go to our options. I'm going to enable publishing to an update server. So this is integrating to our WSUS server. I'm running the console from the server that WSUS is currently installed in. So I can choose this option here. If it was a remote server, we could enter the correct information and port there and click test. So I'm going to go ahead and just click test on this local. It's going to say the connection succeeded, but there's no certificate. Yeah, we'll just click OK on that. And I'm going to go ahead and create a self-signing certificate that we're going to use to sign updates. If you have PKI set up, and you can also use a third-party certificate if you want, you can actually browse and choose that option there. So I just went ahead and created that um, self-signed certificate. So we're going to need to export this certificate and import it into clients so they can trust our updates that we're publishing. Uh, one more option I'm going to choose here in our Config Manager server is Enable Configuration Manager Integration. And we'll go ahead and click uh, Test Connection. Configuration Manager is also running on the server I have SCUP installed. Otherwise, you would choose uh, Connect to Remote Server. We're going to talk about this option later on when we're going uh, over publishing updates. So I'll click OK on this. And the next thing I'm going to do is open a MMC snap-in. And I'm going to add these certificates for the computer account and click Finish and then OK. From here we should have a WSUS folder and this should be where it's going to place our WSUS publisher self-signed certificate that we created within the SCUP console. So we're going to want to export this with the default options here, default here, and we're going to export it to a location. This could be a network share local path. So I'm just going to save it on the C drive as WSUS cert and then finish. So now that that's complete, I'm going to go ahead and set up a group policy that's going to import this signing certificate for our clients and also our servers. This is going to be required when we're doing those updates to make sure that our clients can trust our certificate that we're using to publish updates with. If they don't have this certificate imported, it, it's going to fail when you try to deploy the updates. So I'm going to just create a new um, group policy and link it to the root of the domain. I'm going to call it SCUP. Uh, you can edit a existing policy if you wanted. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the edit. Under policies, Windows settings, security, and then PKI policies. We're going to go ahead and import the certificate to the trusted root certification authorities. I'm going to just browse to the path where I exported it. And we also need to have this imported into our trusted publishers folder. We're going to choose next and then finish. And there's also one more setting that we need to configure in order for clients to successfully install third party updates. And that's under administrative templates, Windows settings, or Windows components, and then Windows updates. So within here, we're going to want to choose the allow signed updates from Microsoft update service location. And we're going to choose enabled on this. So this is going to uh, let our clients know that they can install updates that aren't directly signed from Microsoft. So they're going to be signed using our SCUP certificate. So we'll go ahead and click OK on that and then close our group policy. 
So on this server, I'm going to go ahead and run a group policy update. So now I'm going to open up another MMC snap-in. I'm going to load the certificates again for the computer account and I'm just going to verify that our certificates did come down using group policy. So we can see that our certificates are here under the trusted, trusted root certification authorities and we should also have it under our trusted, uh, trusted publishers. That's right here and we can see that's imported there. Go ahead and close out of this. Now that our certificates are set up, we can go ahead and import our catalog. So I'm going to go to our catalogs node here and I'm going to choose the option to add. Now, if you wanted to import um, the partner catalog, so this would be like Adobe Flash, Adobe Reader, Adobe Acrobat, Dell, HP, you can do that from the add catalogs and then the partners right here. So here we can see our, our catalogs have loaded. So if we wanted to add those, we could just click the add and then we could import them. But I'm going to go ahead and choose cancel on that. We, we don't offer some updates like Adobe Reader and Acrobat that are included there just to just so we don't, don't have duplicates in our console and double work for us. So some of those third party updates we can just add right here from this node. So I'm going to go ahead and click the add right here and this is going to allow us to choose a custom path for our CAD file so once you purchase the catalog you'll receive a link that contains your location for your catalog so I'm going to go ahead and import a catalog that I've configured for this test there's some required information we're going to have to enter here so for the publisher we're going to um, you can go ahead and type in something like patch my PC For the name, you just give it a name, something like Patch My PC Scup Catalog. And then a description. Uh, the support URL is optional. But I'm going to go ahead and add that here. And then we're just going to click OK on that. So we can see our catalog is going to show up here that we imported. So now if we go to our updates workspace, we can go ahead and import this catalog that we've added. So we would just select the uh, Patch My PC SCUP catalog and click Next. You're going to be prompted to trust our certificate the first time. So just go ahead and click Always Accept and then OK. And now we'll see the all the updates getting pulled down from our catalog. just go ahead and click close on that. Okay, so now we have all our different updates showing up in our SCUP console. So we can see the vendor and then the software update here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few of these updates to what's called a publication group. So there's two different ways you can publish updates. Uh, one is directly from the, from the update and one is a publication group and it's definitely much easier to organize your publications when you add them to a group and you publish them all at once this will just allow you to keep track of the updates that you publish so I'm going to go ahead and create a new publication group for an update so I'm going to go ahead and deploy a few of these uh, for demo purposes so I'm going to go ahead and add Firefox 20 I'm going to click the option to assign to a new publication group I'm going to call this, uh, you could do it by the month. It, it depends on how you want to name yours. So I'll just name this something like April 2013 Full Content. And I'm going to choose the Full Content option. So what that's going to do is that's going to actually download the, the uh, update binary and publish it to our WSUS server. If we choose metadata only, it's only going to publish the metadata about the update. So that will allow clients to actually scan against the update, but you won't be able to download and deploy that update until you republish it with full content. The automatic option will allow you to 
publish the update the first time, it will always publish as metadata. And then based on the options that you configure for downloading the update, it will uh, download the update the next time you publish it again using the automatic and that's configured in the options so we can we can set criteria so we will want to download the update for example if one or more client needs it and you can also control it by the size of the update so you could say if one or more client needs it and it's less than 20 gig or 20 megabytes for example go ahead and republish it with full content so in this demo, we'll go ahead and do uh, automatic and full content for two different uh, updates. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Firefox 20 with full content. I'm going to also publish some Java updates. So we're going to publish Java, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, organize this by expired. So I'm going to go ahead and publish Java 6 update 17, Java 6 update 41, and Java 7 update 17, 64-bit and the 32-bit. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to our group that we're using for full content and click OK. I'm also going to publish Google Chrome but before I do that, I'm going to show you how um, updates are, are updated on all, our side, how you're going to be notified. So I often get the question, so when the catalog's updated on your servers, how are we going to know to uh, update it in our SCUP console to get the latest content? So I'm going to show you how that works. So I've updated our CAD file for this demo on our server. So I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the SCUP console. and right when SCUP is launched it will go out and it will detect your catalog to see if any changes has been made on the source so we can see we are getting notified that the catalog has been updated so when when we update the catalog on our server you will be notified here in your console so I'm gonna go ahead and just look at our Chrome update and we can see the latest one we have currently is 26.0.14.10.43 so I'm going to go ahead and import our latest catalog. And we'll click Next and then Next. Um, so if any updates are updated on our side and they currently exist, you get the option to overwrite them. So I'm going to say Yes to All. So we can see five updates were imported and three updates were overwritten. So that means they were changed on the on our side and they updated the data about the update. So we should have some new updates here in our Chrome. So we can see that the previous update is now expired and we have the latest update 26.0.1410.64. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this update and assign it to our full content publication and there's also two option, two other options that you can use to be notified so we have a SCUP newsletter so that will send you a email notification whenever the catalog is updated and you can also subscribe to our RS, RSS feed and that will just notify you whenever there's updates changed so we usually try to publish updates the day that they're released or the day after if it requires additional testing. So you can see in our feed um, all the different publications that we've made. So this could be one uh, another way you can um, check for updates if you don't launch the SCUP console daily. So there's a few more updates I'm going to use for this demo. I'm also going to add VLC player. and I'm going to add two more updates using the automatic publication type. So for those I'm going to choose Adobe Air 
the latest version. I'm going to sign. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one, and I'll call this one April 2013 Automatic. And I'm going to add Shockwave to this one as well. Now it really depends on you if you're going to use the automatic metadata or full content option. It seems like a lot of people just use the full content because they know that the update is going to be in their environment and they're going to deploy it. Um, so if we go in our options here, we can go to our config manager server and here's the options that we can configure for automatic. So this is what's going to determine whether you're going to actually download the update. So by default, if one client needs the update, the update will be downloaded. This uh, zero option here is completely ignored if it's not set to something else. So you could also limit um, the update that, that you would automatically download based on the megabyte. So you could say if the client is more, th more than one client needs the update and it's less than 20 meg, go ahead and publish it with full content. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this at the default. So if one client needs it, we should go ahead and download that update the next time we publish it. So like I said earlier, the first time you publish a automatic update, it's always going to publish with metadata only. And that's because you need to get the clients checking in for that update first before you can actually determine whether clients need it and you're going to publish it with full content. So I'm going to go ahead and click publish here for our automatic publication group. I'm going to click next and then next. Okay, so we can see two updates were published with metadata only. I'm going to go ahead and click close on this. And I'm going to also publish our five or six updates that we're publishing with full content. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and then next. Now when you publish with full content, it's going to take longer because it's actually going to go out to the internet and download the update file that's required for that update. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this part right here you will also be notified to accept the certificate for the update if it's digitally signed so we can see our Firefox update is signed by Mozilla Corporation so I'm going to go ahead and always accept them and while this update is publishing I'll go ahead and so show you a log that you can use to troubleshoot um, updates that are being downloaded So it should be in your temp folder, and then it's called scup.log, and it, that would just give you information about the updates being downloaded. Um, so if you're having issues downloading updates, you can open this log to troubleshoot and get information about the update being published. Okay, so all six updates were published successfully with full content. I did get a few not notifications for different uh, updates to accept the digital certificate. So you can go ahead and just click yes on those when you get them. We go ahead and click close on here and minimize our console. I'm going to open up the configuration manager console and go to our software library. And I'm going to go ahead and run a software, uh, synchronize our software update point with uh, Microsoft and click yes you can monitor your synchronization by going to your logs directly directory for your installation and look at the WSUS or WSync manager log and this will just give you information about your software update point and the updates that it synchronizes and this log can be useful for troubleshooting issues with syncing our uh, updates so I'm going to go ahead and pause it while this is synchronizing okay so our synchronization is complete so we can see that our log says that the database hasn't changed. So this is a change with Configuration Manager 2012. Uh, when you publish a third-party update, it's not automatically going to show up in the, uh, in the software updates. With Configuration Manager 2007, it will. Um, so in order to get these to show up, we want to go to our Site Configuration and then Sites. Right-click our site and then Configure Site Components and then software update point 
I'm currently synchron um, for the classifications I'm using security updates I've checked this this is how we publish most of our updates and for the products we're going to actually have to go in here and check our products for configuration manager 2012 in order for them to show up in our console so I'm going to go ahead and check all of these uh, products that I just published and click apply and then OK. And I'm going to go ahead and resynchronize our software update point and now we should begin pulling in updates on our next sync. Okay, so we can see that it looked like our updates are starting to be synchronized. So we can see in our log here that they are starting to show up, our custom updates here. And we can see that the eight items were updated and our new source content version is one. So now if we go back into our console and refresh, we should start seeing some updates come in here. All right, so here's our updates. We can see that we have the six updates that we published with full content, and they're gonna show up with the green icon. And the blue icon, these are the updates that we published with metadata only. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to our, my devices. So I have two different clients in here that have the client installed. One is a Windows XP box, and I've installed some outdated software on it. And one is a Windows 7 computer. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my device collections, and then all desktop and server clients. And I'm going to go ahead and force a computer policy refresh. So what this should do is this should have these updates detect that they have new updates, and they should start to scan against these so I can start getting results in a little quicker. Uh, this may take around 15 to 20 minutes because it does use state messages to send the compliance information. So I'll go ahead and pause this video while we wait to get the compliance results. Okay, so it took about 15 minutes or so, um, and now I'm starting to get uh, compliance results in. So we can see some of these updates are required by both of our client machines. Some are required by only one. So if we look on our uh, XP client, we can see that it has Java 6 update 38 installed. So this is actually required for that machine, and we have one computer that needs Java 7 update 17, the 32-bit version of that. So we can see it does have Java 7 update 10, the 32-bit version installed, so that is showing required for that one. We don't have any Java 7 update 17 64-bit installations on our two clients and here shockwave we need it on both and VLC player we need on one of the machines. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our reporting services that I've set up for our environment and we can actually start doing reports on these third-party updates. So I'll go ahead and check compliance on our all desktop and servers and then let's say I want to view Adobe updates so we can see that we have two required updates, Adobe Air and Shockwave. We can view Google. We can see that that's required by two. We can view Mozilla. It's also required by two. We can view Oracle. We have different results here. And VLC Player. Is required by one. So once we start making, once we start and make a update group, we can actually drill even deeper into reports with our third-party updates. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our SCUP console, and I'm going to republish our automatic updates that we used, and go ahead and click publish.
Okay, so we can see those two updates that were published automatic previously have now been published with full content. And that's because we detected that there was more than one client that needed those two updates. So I'm going to go ahead and resynchronize our software update point just so we can get that data down to show that this is full content so we can actually download this software update. Okay, so our two updates have finished synchronizing and we can see that it did update only those two and we updated our content content source version. So if I refresh here we should see these icons turn blue for the two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a deployment for these updates. So I'm just going to name the deployment third party updates. June or April. For the software update group, I'm just going to name it third party updates. And for the collection, I'm going to target all of the desktops and servers. I have to hide this so I can see it. So I'm going to click next here. I'm going to make this available as soon as possible. I'm going to go ahead and show all notifications for this demonstration. I just choose download updates even if it's on a, a slow boundary. Uh, this option here to install software updates um, if it can't find on a distribution point it can pull updates from uh, Windows updates. This won't work for our third party updates, so we can leave this unchecked. We need to create a new deployment package. So I'm going to go ahead and browse to a location on my network. I've already created a folder that I'm going to use to download these updates to. Go ahead and choose that path, and then next, I'm going to distribute it to uh, my single distribution point here. I'm going to download the software updates from the internet. This is actually going to be downloading it from our WSUS server. I'm going to click next, and then next. This shouldn't take too long because we are downloading it from our local server. Okay, so we can see our six updates or eight updates were deployed. So I'll click close here. And we should have a deployment package that contains our updates and a software update group with a single deployment. So I'm going to go ahead and download our machine policy on these computers to get this kicked off a little quicker for them to detect these updates. Okay, so it only took about a minute or two for them to detect those updates. So I'm going to go ahead and click our little balloon here, and I'm going to do the same thing for our Windows 7 computer. Okay, so we can see these updates are available. We could have made this mandatory and you could actually integrate these updates with your normal Windows updates deployment or you could create a custom update group for third party updates but essentially once you publish these you, they can be managed just like any other update deployment you would do for Windows updates. So we can take a look at our our current software we have quite a few outdated software uh, titles here 
So I'm going to go ahead and just choose all of these and click install. I'm going to do the same thing for our Windows XP client. We can see that these versions are also outdated. Okay, so it looks like Adobe Air has already been installed. So if we refresh here, we can see that version number is up to the latest. Looks like Shockwave is finished. Okay, so we can see Shockwave is at the latest version. Looks like Firefox is finished. So we can see Firefox has been updated. Looks like Java is installing now. Java just finished, so we should have version 17 now. There we go. Google Chrome is installing. That's finished. So we can see our Chrome version updated. And VLC is being installed now. And it looks like that just finished up. And we can see that's at the latest version as well. So we'll go ahead and close out of here and go back to our XP client. Looks like a few of these has finished up already. So it looks like Java was updated to 6 update 41, as well as Firefox. Looks like Shockwave just finished. Adobe Air is finished. And Chrome is installing now. Okay, so that's how the updates will look on the client if you made it available. Uh, you can control this and make it mandatory like I mentioned before. So I'll go ahead and pause this video and let the results get sent back to our server and then we can take a look at the reports in the console for these updates. Okay, so I'm back in the console and we've got our reports back so we can see that our compliance is at 100% for the update installed click on our software update group we can see that we're at hundred percent for all the machines in the deployment. You can also take a look at the reports. And we could drill into this update group. And we could view individual updates. We could get a status on what machines need them. So we have two that currently have Google Chrome installed. We can look at VLC player. We have one that has it installed. That's the Windows 7 computer. And then we have one where it's not required, and that's our XP computer. And you can create your own custom reports with uh, data that we get back from these updates. I hope this video has helped you understand how you can harness the power of System Center Update Publisher to ease the pain of third party patching in your Configuration Manager environment. Whether or not you decide our catalog is right for you, I highly recommend implementing SCUP even if it's just for the free Adobe updates. If you have any further questions, you can email us directly at support at patchmypc.net or by using our contact form on our website. Once again, I would like to thank Rob Marshall and everyone at the UK Windows Management User Group for giving me the opportunity to demo our product. Thank you.